Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and this is Scarfy, a Lion brand yarn that is 78% acrylic, 22% wool. This yarn has some really cool gradient-like features, and today we are going to over dye it with some Wilton's Violet food coloring. The first thing that I need to do is take this ball of yarn and wind it into a skein on my Knitty Knotty. But before I start, let's take a look from the outside in of this gradient yarn. I am not expecting the blacks to over dye with any significant color, but I think that we can get some really cool variation in the pale gray sections that will give us something really, really unique and spectacular. This ball of yarn is 150 grams, and I am going to use all of it for this project. Now we need to pre-soak this yarn in some plain tap water for a minimum of 20 minutes so that way the yarn is saturated and it can easily go into our dye pot. In our dye pot I have added 10 cups of water and I am going to start with only one tablespoon of white vinegar. I think that's a generous tablespoon. Uh, you could start with two to three tablespoons if you want the dye to absorb a little faster, but I find starting with one helps the reds bind and slows down the absorption of the blue enough so we can see some really dramatic breaking. So I'm now going to let this heat up. While the dye bath is heating up, I am going to add a half of a teaspoon of Wilton's Violet Icing Color. Eek! to half a cup of water. And I'm adding a nice heaping uh, spoonful. When I'm dyeing 100% wool, I like to use a half teaspoon of the food coloring per 100 grams of yarn. And I find that this amount gives me a really nice, deep, saturated color. However, even though we have 150 grams of yarn today, I know that Overall, there is less wool in this yarn, and so I decided to just go for this half teaspoon versus increasing it proportionally. All right, we are approaching a boil, so I am going to reduce the heat. And now I am going to add the food coloring to our dye pot, and then we will immediately start dip dyeing our yarn. I did remove some of the excess water from the pre-soak uh, just to sort of make things a little bit easier. But look at that color. The color will fade um, as this dries. I find that with acrylic blends especially you don't get um, the same depth of color well, that you might see with 100% with wool yarns. And things tend to look a lot brighter when wet. And I'm realizing that I did make one calculated error here today in that I did not, I don't have a metal spoon around. So you can see that even up here we're still getting a fair amount of pink. With the low amount of vinegar, I'm not expecting to see some of the blues, but okay, there we go. Um, I want as much of the pink to absorb as possible. Let's see, okay, we're getting kind of blue. So I'm not gonna have a huge, huge blue section here today. But you can see that there we go. We've got some some blues towards the end. So what happens is that the red number threes will bind before the blues, um, before the blue number ones. And so this is what gives us this gradient of color. But overall, this soaks up the dye a little slower, um, even with my low amount of vinegar, because there isn't that much wool in there. Okay, so now 
I am going to add a little more vinegar to, oh, okay, so that's one, and then two. You can see when I poured that on, the blues actually have not really started to bind to the yarn at all. Um, that merely they were just sort of sitting on there. But most of the reds have absorbed. So we're gonna need a little bit of time to get to get these blues in. But yeah, even removing it. Okay. You can see that the runoff, see how that's so blue. But we did get a lot more pink all over. Normally I'm able to get a little more of a gradient going on. But nevertheless we will have a beautiful yarn. So I am, you can see that the heat is sort of slowly coming back up. I will come back in five minutes and we can see just how much color is left. But all the reds are currently in the yarn. So we're five minutes in and there's still a lot of color in here. I'm used to seeing things sort of start to clear a little bit sooner. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little more vinegar. Maybe so with the bigger volume of yarn, things just aren't quite as acidic as I want. Whoa. All right, I added two. But yeah, these blues just aren't sticking for whatever reason. Maybe we also need to bring, stir it up a little bit, bring a little more heat. But it's also possible that I have severely overloaded this. What did I say? This was 22% wool. So anyway, um, you can see that it's starting to bubble. So I'm going to reduce the heat again. But we'll come back in, let's say, 15 minutes and see if we are making any difference with absorbing these blues. You know, it's funny. I've done Kool-Aid, I've done food coloring, but I've never used, tried breaking a Wilton's Violet or any Wilton colors on these wool acrylic blends before. So, interesting. It has been another 15 minutes. Okay, so we still definitely have some blue in the pot, but slowly the color is absorbing. Um, I, I think that there is definitely less color in here now well, than there was before. So it just might take a little bit of time. The heat is on low and I was debating whether or not I would turn off the heat entirely right now and let it cool off, but I think I'm going to leave this little bit of heat on for another 20 minutes and then we will come back and check and see how the color is doing. After an additional 20 minutes, woohoo, things are finally starting to clear. I am officially going to turn off the heat and let this yarn sort of sit in our bath. I'm going to let it cool completely while submerged to give the fibers time to absorb more of the color. But, woohoo, look at that. Actually, things don't look as necessarily as bright as they once did. But, anyway, I am going to let this cool off and then once everything's cool, we'll wash the yarn. It is time to wash our yarn and I have to say this does not look the way that I expected. Um, I guess on camera it's reading a lot more pink but right here it's sort of a dusty purple um, but all of the color did absorb from the dye pot. Right. So we definitely have some evidence of breaking in that there are some pinker sections and more purple sections, but the color absorbs this yarn way slower than it does when I'm doing 100% wool. 
So I am really curious to see how the colors might shift as we as the yarn dries. But right now, this is so beautiful. So I'm happy. I am going to use a little bit of clear dish soap just to help with the strong vinegar smell and sometimes this also helps uh, dislodge excess dye that could be present um, and yep it looks like we're seeing some bleeding we're seeing some pink bleeding which does not often happen there was some evidence of some of the red that had crashed out along the side. So I suppose that there could be some particles around here that need to come out. But normally, we're, oh, and I suppose that the, the cotton ties are a little bit stained. So there's some sources that could be resulting in this color. But anyway, I am going to keep this gentle wash up until the water runs clear and given how much color we added that the bleeding that we're seeing isn't that much but anyway I am going to keep rinsing and I'll come back with the finished dried yarn here is the finished dried yarn we dyed 150 grams of this wool acrylic blend the scarfy base was 78% acrylic, 22% wool, and we used as much Wilton's Violet food coloring, a half teaspoon, as we would for if we were using 100 grams of 100% wool. There is no question that we broke the food coloring. We have here shades of pink, purple, and blue, but they are significantly um, you're muted in this colorway than they are if we were to dye 100% wool. For comparison's sake, here is a skein of the Broken Wilton's Violet yarn that is 100% wool on top of our over dyed scarfie. So you can see just how vibrant a color you can achieve with this much food coloring. So yes! Technically, we broke Wilton's Violet food coloring on a wool acrylic blend yarn. Hooray! But is this the best example of this experiment? Uh, maybe not. Maybe I should have chosen a more solid wool acrylic blend to do this so that way we could really get a better sense of the true color. It was a lot of fun to over dye this scarfy yarn, but since it has sections of black, you know, we, it's harder for us to get a sense of just how much color we did apply to the yarn um, because, you know, there was limited space for the color to go anyway. I think that these muted purples, pinks, and blues are really lovely. However, I will admit I'm a tad bit disappointed that the colors are so muted. I know that in general, when I dye these wool acrylic blends, we get pastels. I guess I still thought that the hues might have a little more variation to them. I was absolutely surprised to see how slowly this absorbed the dye. Um, I mean, maybe I shouldn't be because of the total wool content, but it overall did absorb the dye significantly slower than the 100% wool or superwash wool yarns that we use a lot on this channel. So while these changes are not super dramatic, and you can't really expect to get something dramatic when you are using some kind of acid dye like food coloring to over dye a wool acrylic blend, but this is still a really dramatic yarn and with 150 grams there's enough to make a lot of different projects. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and give the video a like. I release at least two new dyeing videos every week, and we have a lot of fun. If you are interested in supporting Chemnitz on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can find a link in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.